It is difficult to establish definitive classifications in art. Different styles often merge into one another. All the same distinctions can be made. Thus, since the days of ancient Egypt, a definite tradition has come into being, which is based on simplified forms, on shapes reduced to diagrammatic outlines. This way of treating form, which comes to us from the earliest centuries, has continued until the present day. In our times, this tradition of intellectual rigor is brilliantly exemplified by Seurat. Equally enduring is the tradition which exalts the beauty of the flesh, which treats form with suppleness in the round and speaks of fulfillment and physical well-being. In this exaltation of earthly things, Renoir's genius flowers with magnificent freedom. There also exists a tradition of emotional violence. Like its nature, its progress is headlong, reflecting the anguished and the extreme. The art of Picasso is a brilliant example of the tradition of the extreme in art. These three traditions, sensual, intellectual, emotional, manifest themselves throughout the centuries, not together, but at different times and at different places. Contemporary French art, which is of an exceptional richness, continues all three traditions, boldly renewing and rediscovering them. Renoir, Seurat, Picasso. To examine these three painters, to select them rather than so many others, is to become acquainted with three essential tendencies of modern art, and indeed of all art. With Renoir, all is flowing curves, circles, and supple movement. With Seurat, everything is straight, rectangular outlines, and calm lines.
Picasso is abrupt, angular, and bristling with sharp points. Renoir, a fresh and tender sensuality, the sunlit open air painting of quiet physical satisfaction. His is an art of calm and happy faces, of music gardens and dancing, an art which depicts all the pleasures of the earth, the richness of the body, supple form, happy nudes, fruit and flowers.
With Seurat, all movement ceases. Shape, arrested, meditates and arranges itself in learned compositions. He is a painter of simple contrasts, of angular and diagrammatic outlines. This is an art, quiet and withdrawn, discreet, but of a delicate and gentle intellectual severity. Picasso brings to art a tremendous emotional power. He is an artist who practices in his paintings a kind of strong pictorial evaluation of life. When he simplifies in the manner of Seurat, he becomes diagrammatic or symbolic in the extreme. 
he transposes the sensual tenderness of Renoir into colossal proportions. In his own way, driven by his devouring curiosity, he re-explores the entire field of the plastic arts and draws inspiration from the most varied forms of aesthetic expression. Picasso has portrayed the artist as he sees himself, in quest of the most diverse forms. And even with his model before him, he is ready to try the freest of interpretations of other people's work as well as of forms invented by himself. With untiring enthusiasm, he is in turn realistic, ironical, affectionate, delicate, Brutal, neoclassical, abstract, orderly, precise, fantastic, and extreme. But in spite of its great variety, his art is guided by certain constant factors. When he turns from violence, Picasso often becomes tender. His work then suggests peace, dancing games, sleep, the sound of flutes and guitars. But this peace and quiet submission to life to which Picasso returns periodically are the exception for him. His most constant mood, which appears in the most unpredictable variations, 
is one of sadness, turning frequently to nightmare, anguish, and panic. Passionate variations of Picasso's art are above all visible in his varied treatment of the human face. Picasso concentrates on the face, but carried away by a kind of unrestrained rage and his stress on violent forms of expression, it becomes a distortion and a symbol, not a human face. If Picasso's acrobatics disturb us and induce a feeling of giddiness, Renoir, even after he became paralyzed, reassures us. He forcefully expresses his unconquerable confidence in life. Renoir heads a line of instinctive and refined modern painters for whom art is a hymn of praise to the joys of the earth. Seurat, here shown as drawn by himself at work in his studio and photographed shortly before his death, is the prototype of the orderly artist. Seurat leads the way for a whole series of contemporary painters for whom art is based on reflection and a rigorous simplicity. Tireless inventor, craftsman, and creator, Picasso is the painter of all forms of upheaval and change. He is the boldest and most extreme among the group of true artists to whom art is first and foremost 
a violent and passionate mode of expression. The three tendencies, sensual, intellectual, emotional, are not, however, entirely distinct from one another. They mingle with and influence one another, leading to a magnificence of diversity. In Cezanne, for instance, physical compactness, a rational balance, and passion combine with one another. Even Renoir is not always and exclusively sensual. In contrast to his usual manner, he designs occasionally with a dry precision some of Seurat's paintings are aglow with a supple, sensual gentleness. And if Picasso's whole work is consumed with passion, it is frequently constructed on very strict lines and is always animated by intense, sensual pleasure. And thus, all art, even when it is essentially tragic, is in some way a song of the joy of life. Thank you. 